Joining now is an elected official in one of those swing states, Dana Nessel, the Attorney General of Michigan. Dana, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I want to talk to you a little bit about what you have been experiencing ever since you called Michigan for, uh, for President-elect Joe Biden. Well, it's been nonstop, these frivolous lawsuits uh, that we've had to defend. And frankly, it's been an enormous waste of taxpayer money. Um, we've seen attorneys make claims that have no kind of basis in fact or in law. And frankly, we've seen a number of attorneys, whether they are the attorneys that are bringing the cases in the state of Michigan, or whether it's the 19 attorneys general um, who brought and supported the case in the United States Supreme Court, We've seen each and every one of them violate their oath not to make misrepresentations to the court uh, and not to bring frivolous and unjust cases. And each and every one of them, in my opinion, has compromised their law license. Uh, and it's going to be um, part of their legacy that they chose a demagogue over democracy. One of the things that our panelists right before you noted was how unusual it was for Republicans to join the ranks of the president and basically either signing a piece of paper saying that these were illegitimate elections or staying quiet. What do you say when it comes to the need for us to have a sanctity and trust in our electoral system? Well, it's absolutely essential if we don't want uh, our democracy to die. Uh, if we've lost our faith, and our confidence in our electoral process. Really, what do we have left at that point? And it's so unusual to me, and I think this was brought up earlier, is that how do you say that it's only the office at the top of the ticket where there was fraud, but that the other elections somehow uh, were not fraudulent? These individuals, these, these congressional representatives, these state representatives, they're really undermining their own elections, and it makes no sense. Well, and Chris Krebs, he was fired unceremoniously by the president. Uh, he was appointed by the president, which is ironic, because he actually certified the election. Speak a little bit about how dangerous that is to fire individuals based on political calculations. Well, it's what we've seen throughout the entirety of the time that Trump has been in office. No matter how much of a loyalist these hand-selected individuals are, the second they refuse to follow strict orders uh, for the president, then they are uh, summarily excused from their positions. And, um, you know, we know that Bill Barr is in that position right now, even though he's gone to great lengths to compromise his integrity and uh, his credibility, um, all because of this particular president. Um, you know, how will we have faith in any of our institutions any longer if you're allowed to do this? And I think that's something we're going to have to evaluate as to whether or not the executive branch will have that kind of control anymore uh, to fire these individuals without any cause whatsoever. And Dana, one of the things that I find most disturbing out of all of this is, yes, it's the it's the firings, it's denying facts and truths, but it's also the incredible danger uh, that they have placed in public officials trying to do, public servants trying just to simply do their job. There is a dog whistle of sorts targeting individuals to change their minds. Can you speak a little bit to that and how that may be so unusual for this time? Oh, it's not really a dog whistle anymore, is it? No. I mean, these are direct. No, right. it's, not, it's no longer, but it's so dangerous. I have to share. The reason I ask is because my family fled Colombia, and the last things that I remember was that for speaking truth for a public servant was uh, was akin to a death sentence. And I think that that is where we have to speak very clearly to the American public of how unusual it is for a president, let alone an attorney general, to go after an individual, whether it's Twitter or otherwise. So speak a little bit to those dangers and your concerns. Well, look at what we've seen just in the state of Michigan in the last several months. Um, based on the very hateful and dangerous rhetoric of the president and his seeming uh, support of white supremacy groups, of militia organizations, uh, of other extremist groups, you know, we've had threats to our governor, to our secretary of state, to our state legislatures. Uh, to our board of canvassers, both state and county, now to our, our electors, who tomorrow, I mean, it, it, people should understand, they're meeting tomorrow, uh, and all of Lansing has been effectively shut down. They've had to shut down uh, our state house and our state senate, and most of the uh, state offices at this point, including mine, are going to have to be evacuated, or they, people that will not be 
going to the government buildings as a result of these threats. Uh, and it won't be the first time, by the way, that the legislature has been shut down or the Capitol building has had to be closed. So literally at this point, it seems as though we're at the mercy of these individuals. But let me make this point and let me make it uh, incredibly clear. This is domestic terrorism. Uh, just these threats alone constitute a 20 year offense in the state of Michigan. So I have a message for the people who are making these threats and that's this, we are looking for you, we will find you, we will prosecute you and you'll be held accountable. Attorney General Nessel, do you believe that what the president tried to do was an attempt to, attempted coup? An attempted to coup. kill, did you say? No, attempted oh, coup. Coup. Yeah. coup. Coup. Okay. Yeah, I, absolutely. I don't know how you can call it anything but that. And of course, all his aiders and abettors and enablers um, that have lent support. Uh, I don't know what else you can say. I mean, this is an effort to take um, multiple states, including mine, and to undermine the will of the people. So absolutely, to me, that is a coup. Uh, and that all of these individuals that participated in one way or the other should be held accountable. And I think that their voters um, should recognize what they've done. I don't think any of them have earned another term in office. And um, again, their names and their, and their legacies will forever be tainted uh, by their subservience um, and their, the fact that they were nothing more than sycophants to this president. It's, uh, it's disturbing. And it's a sad chapter in American history. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.